Welcome to another edition of the Giants Huddle Podcast brought to you by Citizens, the official bank of the New York football Giants. John Schwelk, Matthew Sytak. The Giants have their initial 53-man roster. Keep in mind, by the time this is up even or shortly thereafter, the Giants might have some waiver claims and some of these names might change. But we know who the initial 53 players are, Matt. And we did our predictions on Big Blue Kickoff Live on Monday. Uh, for a more detailed analysis, uh, Tatino and I are on Big Blue Kickoff Live Wednesday live at 1230 or just check out the archive uh, on your favorite podcast platform. So not a ton of surprises here. We'll kind of rapid fire through this in about 15, 20 minutes, uh, position group by position group. I think we, we got a lot of this right. We got a couple players wrong. We'll talk about that. So as we suspected, Matt, and I'll go through these three groups quickly because I think this is exactly what we thought it was going to be. Quarterbacks, they kept all three in Daniel Jones, Tommy DeVito, Drew Locke. They kept the three running backs we all expected in Eric Gray, Devin Singletary, and Tyrone Tracy Jr. Then a tight end, they kept the three guys we thought were shoo-ins for the roster, Daniel Bellinger, Theo Johnson, and Chris Manhurts, but no one else was able to get in and onto the roster at either running back or tight end. Yeah, I would say the only thing that maybe I guess was a, a little bit of a surprise was we both thought Jakob Johnson had a, a decent chance to make the roster. Yeah, he was like that, my last guy in on offense. Yeah, yeah, as that fullback, tight end, you know, sort of hybrid position. But, you know, he was part of Tuesday's cuts. So, yeah, I mean, the nine guys from those three position groups we just talked about are exactly who we expected to make the final roster. Yeah, and, initial roster. Yeah, and we'll see, you know, what these other players from these positions at running back, like maybe a Dante Miller, maybe he'll be able to sneak onto the practice squad. Guys like that at tight end. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to get Jack Stoll onto the practice squad as well as someone they brought in this offseason. He's a two-way player. He can block, and he can also uh, catch. We'll see about Lawrence Cager. He obviously has the hamstring injury. If they can figure out a way to event eventually bring him back after being, you know, I think he was waived injured, technically correct. Yep. So if can they figure out a way to bring him back the same way they waived injured, you know, um, Ryder Anderson, who's been in the building, by the way, rehabbing. So we'll see if they can figure out a way to get those guys back in the mix later down the road. Yeah, it's just it's important to keep in mind, you know, there are some fans out there that are upset to see some of these guys get released yesterday. But just because they got released yesterday doesn't mean they're not going to be part of this team the Giants have 16 practice squad spots to fill and I'm assuming a lot of those spots or a good number of them will go to guys that we're here for all the training camp we're here for the preseason familiar with the systems so just because someone got released yesterday doesn't mean that's the last time we'll see them Correct. Uh, by the way, just so people understand, the other players uh, that were waived injured prior to the cut to 53, Mario Goodrich, who picked up that hamstring injury in the final preseason game, Jalen Mayfield, who hurt himself in an OV Ogufo, um, also reserve injured was Isaiah McKenzie, who suffered an injury. Apparently, it was reported by Art Stapleton uh, the night of the game, which I did not see. Otherwise, I would not have put about my 53 when we did our predictions. Um, so he was another guy that was uh, waved injured. And then we'll get to the defense. Uh, Matthew Adams was put on IR prior to the 53, designated to return. So he's someone that can come back as early as four games into the season. Well, McKenzie wasn't waved injured. He was just straight up put on injured, injured reserve. reserve. So he's Correct. out for the season. Mm -hmm. He cannot play for the Giants in 2024. Excellent note. Good point. All right. Wide receivers. J1 Hyatt, Malik Neighbors, Darius, Rob Darius Slayton, Wanda Robinson, obviously the four guys we all expected. Then, again, this was an injury thing. We didn't know how serious it was. Gunnar Olszewski, who was out of practice yesterday, doing catching a couple of punts. He made the roster as a return guy and also a special teams player. And then, ahead of Miles Boykin, ahead of Allen Robinson, Bryce Ford Wheaton, coming off that ACL as a rookie, making a play here as a guy that they think has a lot of special teams capacity with his size and speed combination, which is always what you're looking for in that. And I guess as opposed to Boykin, they probably thought Ford Wheaton had a little bit more upside as a wide receiver down the road, which is maybe what kind of gave him the final edge when they figured out who that last guy on a wide receiver was going to be. Yeah, I would say this was probably one of the, the spots that surprised me a little bit just because there hasn't you know, been a lot of buzz surrounding Bryce Ford Whedon this summer. Uh, we both thought Miles Boykin had a real good shot at making the team. He seemed to be you know, one of the core special teams players for the Giants during the preseason. But let's, just, let's not forget, Bryce Ford Whedon was playing in that role last year as an ro undrafted rookie free agent. He was the Giants' primary gunner and looked great in that position before he tore his ACL. And he also flashed as a wide receiver at that time too. We've seen him flash a little bit at a wide receiver this summer as well. More quiet than he was last summer, though, at wide receiver. I yeah, think. but yeah. I think that's expected for a guy that's, you know, just about 12 months removed from a torn ACL. I think as we saw with Wandell Robinson last year, 
as we get further into the season, Bryce Ford Whedon is going to start looking more and more like he did prior to the injury. So they clearly were, you know, betting on Bryce Ford Whedon with his special teams abilities, along with what they think he can grow into as a potential wide receiver. Absolutely. All right, let's get to the offensive line. You were right. They ended up keeping 10 instead of 9. Austin Schlotman uh, was the 10th guy that you add on. He ended up making the team as, as the primary backup center. The rest of the group should not surprise anybody. Andrew Thomas, Jermaine Illuminor, uh, John Runyon, John Michael Schmitz, Aaron Stinney, Greg Van Roten, Jake Kubas, the young player, Evan Neal, of course, on, Josh Azudu on, and then, as I mentioned, Austin uh, Schlotman. So those are your 10 offensive linemen. They really have a, a lot of depth at different spots. So at tackle, you have your two starters, Illuminor and Thomas. You have Azudu and Neal that can play tackle behind them. At center, you have Schmitz. You have Schlotman as your backup. And then you have Van Roten and even Runyon as guys that can slide over. And then at guard, you have your two starters or the guys we think are going to start in Van Roten and Runyon. And then behind them, you have your undrafted free agent, Jake Kubas. I believe he was the only undrafted free agent this year to make the 50. Elijah Chapman. And Elijah Chapman. So, so those are the two. Good call. Thank you. Um, those are the backup guards along with Aaron Stinney. So you have a lot of depth at each one of those offensive line spots in case you get a rash of injuries like the Giants unfortunately had last year. Yeah. I mean, we've spent, I don't know how many months, four or five months now talking about all the resources that the Giants put towards the offensive line. We look at the 10 guys that made it. Four of them are were veteran free agent signings, two of which we expect to start in a Luminor or three. I'm sorry, Luminor. Sorry, five offensive linemen free agent additions between Luminor, Runyon, and Van Roden, who we think all three of them will start, and then Aaron Stinney and Austin Schlotman, who seem to be two of the primary backups. Schlotman at center and Stinney at guard. So. Based on what happened last year with the offensive line, clearly, as we've spoken about at length, improving both the starting and the depth up front was perhaps the biggest priority for the Giants this offseason. I think they accomplished that, looking at the 10 guys that made the team. And I just want to you know, give props to Jay Kubas. It's not easy for an undrafted free agent to make the team. Uh, the Giants signed him right after the draft. He was part of the group of original undrafted free agents. And he just worked his tail off. All the training camp played well in the preseason. That's one of the guys that, you know, they rewarded him for performing well throughout the summer. That's you bring these undrafted guys in because you want to see them sort of shine and earn a spot. And there is no doubt about it that Jay Kubas earned his spot on the roster. You're ready for a change. Payday comes early with citizens. So go to that retreat. New you moves to the country. Now you're raising goats and launching a lifestyle brand. Are you ready for all that life brings? All right, we got about 10 minutes to go here, folks. But uh, before we move on to the next thing here, don't forget football season is coming. In fact, it's almost here. And so is the next college semester. If you need funding, a citizen student loan could help you pay for 100% of your school certified costs. Get your rate quote in just about two minutes at citizensbank.com slash pay for college. All right, let's go to defense, Matt. The defensive line ended up looking like both of us thought it would with five guys checking in there. Dexter Lawrence, Elijah Chapman, DJ Davidson, Nacho, Raheem Nunez, Rochez, and Jordan Riley. Yeah, no surprises there. I mean, I expect Dexter and Nacho to probably be the two starters. And then the other three will have to earn, you know, playing time, earn their spot in the rotation to come in. But If you had to guess, who would have the third most snaps in that in this group this year? I, th honestly, I think it'd be Davidson. Because he can I, play nose and he can play three. Yeah, I guess it'd be Davidson, but it would not surprise me if it's not too long down the road where Elijah Chapman is getting some serious snaps. It might just be on passing situations, but I think he's going to earn himself an actual role, a rotational role on this defense. They ended up keeping five edge players. I'm sure you're kicking yourself for not putting Benton Whitley on, on, on your initial 53. <laughs> so close to doing hey, it. I, 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 I know you were trying. It was hard to get him on. Uh, Brian Burns, Kayvon Thibodeau, Boogie Basham, Aziz Ojolari, and Benton Whitley, your five edge players. Yeah, again, not nothing really surprising there. And just like I was talking about with Jay Kubas, Whitley is another guy that he just straight up earned his spot by playing so well in the preseason. I know we spoke about on Monday that he showed up a little bit more in the preseason games rather than in practice. Which, by the way, is not a bad thing. No, definitely not a bad thing. I mean, I, if you have to choose one or the other, I think I'd you'd rather, rather the, the guy show up in yeah, the game situation. 
Uh, and I think I really think his performance against the Jets this past weekend really is what solidified his spot on the team. Yeah, I think you're probably right. He had a great great game in the second half against the Texans too, rushing yep. the passer late in that game, and against Detroit, he did well. He did well in all three of those games. Uh, the inside linebackers and off-ball linebackers. This is where they kept a lot of numbers, and my guess is because some of these guys are banged up, so they want to make sure that they have guys that are healthy in Week One. So Bobby Okereke, obviously Carter Coughlin, who's coming off injury, Deontay Johnson, who's coming off injury, Micah McFadden, who's coming off injury, and then you have Darius Musau. So they ended up keeping five of those off-ball inside linebacker types, and a lot of those guys are going to have a huge role in special teams as well as playing uh, in your base defense. Yeah, for sure. Other than, you know, Bobby Okereke and I guess Micah McFadden, you'd presume when he's healthy, I think all the other three guys will contribute right away on special teams, and assuming, by the way, assuming they're healthy. In the second preseason game, McFadden was actually on some special teams as well. Yeah, so he might actually get some special teams play too. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me either. Uh, the only, I guess Deontay Johnson was the only one of this group that I didn't have on my final 53-man roster prediction, but that's because I thought Matthew Adams would make it. And as you mentioned earlier, Matthew Adams was put on IR, designated yep. a return, so he's going to miss at least the first four games. Had I known the severity of that injury, I probably would have put Deontay Johnson as the fifth inside linebacker. But yeah, again, no surprises. Deontay Johnson looked great at the start of training camp, played great in that Lions preseason game before he injured himself. Hopefully it's not long before we see him back on the field. And again, we'll see. This thing could change in a a couple hours too. So we'll see how that goes. Finally, defensive backfield. Wow, this is a young group. When you take a look at it, and just to note, Isaiah Simmons is included in this group. So let's they we have it on the website as DBs. Let's for our purposes try to split this into corners and safeties yep. here a little bit, and we'll we'll just take Isaiah Simmons and put him into the. He does a little bit of three different positions and kind of push him off to the side. Yep. So cornerback, we have obviously Deontay Banks and Cordell Flott and Nick McLeod. Uh, then Drew Phillips inside, and then Trey Hawkins is kind of your backup perimeter defensive back. These are guys that all of which did not play in the final preseason game, so it was not difficult to figure out which one of these guys were going to be on the final roster. Yeah, no surprises with that cornerback group. Uh, Drew Phillips really earned, I mean, as Coach said at the beginning of training camp, no rookies were going to be handed starting spots. They have to earn them. And in the limited action Drew Phillips had, it seems like he earned that starting nickel corner job. He just played well. It brings a toughness to the defense that you don't see a lot from rookies, rookie cornerbacks even. Uh, I'm excited to see him come week one. But yeah, when it comes to the outside corners, really no surprise there. Deontay Banks is going to be the the number one corner. And I I guess we'll somewhat see about the second outside corner spot. I think it depends on Cordell Flott's, you know, where he is on his recovery from the injury. You would think it's between him and McLeod fighting for that second that CB2 spot. Uh yeah, I just hope we get a healthy flot this week and I think coach said he was returning to practice. He's going to start doing a little bit more. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I mean, I just want to see these guys fully healthy for week 1 just so we can see what they can, you know, really do. You love turf. You're good at it. So you start a turf biz. Business grows, your savings grow. Become the most celebrated name in turf. Are you ready for all that life brings? And it does look like most of the guys that are supposed to get a lot of playing time are working their way back into practice. So I'm not sure there's going to be any guys that are really held back by injury in week one, which after you're coming out of a long camp, very, very fortunate. Look at some of the other teams around the league. There's a lot of teams that have, you know, the Giants put the Cowboys in week four, right? They lost their starting corner to, you know, he's fresh surgery on a stretch fracture on his foot. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other guys that have suffered season-long injuries. But there's there, there's Matt a lot Milano of Milano and the Bills. The Bills have had a couple guys that have gone yeah. out. So it just, you know, very, very fortunate as of now that the Giants have not suffered any of those very serious injuries. Yep. You thought there might have been one time with Tracy Jr., and then he ended up dodging a bullet, and he's already— He was back on the field two days later. <laughs> which is insane. Uh, at safety, uh, again, a young group. Javarius Owens managed to get on. And then, of course, you have the, the three that we think are going to share most of those snaps at the spot. And Jason Pinnock, Dane Belton, and rookie Tyler Newbin. Yeah, again, really no surprises there. I think we both had Javarius Owens making the 53-man roster on our final predictions, probably one of the last spots. Yep. Uh, no surprises with this group. I you know, wouldn't be surprised if defensive backs in general is an area that the front office might try to you know attack in waivers, depending on who's available, who they could potentially 
try to grab. Wouldn't surprise me to see them active in that position group. All right, final two points here. Uh, first, special teams. Casey Kreider, Graham Gano, Jamie Gillen. No surprise there. Uh, they did name... Let me talk about the defensive back room for a second, man. And again, I'll do more of this on Big Blue Kickoff Live. So in their defensive backfield, all right, the Giants have two 22-year-olds on the team. That's it. Jalen Hyatt, the other one is Drew Phillips, who's going to be the Giants' starting nickel. Deontay Banks, Cordell Flott, Dane Belton, Tyler Newbin. They're all 23 years old. All right? It's a young group. So you're looking at five of the guys that are supposed to play a majority of the snaps for you are either 22 or 23 years old. And then the veterans of the group. <laughs> I'm doing air quotes for those of you listening. Uh, Jason Pinnock is 25, and Nick McLeod is 26. Both going into year four in the NFL? I believe. Yeah, I believe Nick McLeod might be year five. Pinnock is year, year five, four. but he didn't play one of those years. Yeah, I would. I, you know, like, let me look it up right now. Hold on. Um, but I, I actually wanted to look up Javarius Owens because I did not put that in the story, and I should look up to see uh, what year he is on. But um, yeah, it's just a very, very, very. Again, I'll emphasize very young group. So just real quickly, looking at the safeties here, Javarius Owens is twenty four. Uh, Pinnock is in his fifth, fourth year, and Nick McLeod must be listed as a DB. CB. He's CB? Yeah. Okay, and he is in his fourth year as well. You're correct. So It's a very young group. Very young group. They're gonna, you know, the defense is going to need some of these young guys to really take a step in their development this year. If they do, the sky's the limit for this defense. Yeah, 100%. Now, they also named captains. Last year, there were 10, and Brian Dable kind of indicated they went down to five this year. It was more because of the nature of the voting than it was any conscious decision on his part. So my guess is that the votes last year must have just been spread out among different players a lot more, and yeah. they were really concentrated this year. So none of these captains should, should surprise people. Daniel Jones, Andrew Thomas on offense. Dexter Lawrence, Bobby O'Karake on defense, and then Casey Kreider at special teams. Yeah, all five of these guys have been captains for the Giants at least one other season prior to this year. It's no new captains. I know some people might be surprised about Casey Kreider, but he was a captain a couple of years ago. And this represented him and Graham Gano were both special teams captains, I believe it was the 2022 season. Uh, but yeah, these are, you know, exactly the guys I expected to be captains. We didn't know the number of captains. I thought. There could have been another one or two potentially, but none of these five guys surprise me in the slightest. These are the, the leading voices in the locker room. And, of course, stay tuned to Giants.com for continuing news on other changes or alterations that might be made to this initial 53, the waiver deadline, uh, not deadline, but the waiver claims get processed, I believe, at noon today, if I'm at not noon, mistaken. yes. So hopefully we'll get some word of that before we go live on Big Blue Kickoff Live at 1230. Uh, stay tuned to that. And, of course, go to the different podcast platforms as we continue to break down what this Giants roster will look like heading into week one, which, oh, my gosh, Cytac, it is finally only 12 days away. I know. We get our first regular season football game. I know. Can We got a nice little weekend somewhat off and then go right into week one. I couldn't be more excited. Yes, and I will once again thank the NFL gods for removing roster cutdown day from Labor Day weekend and putting it on a weekday. I will just want to say, though, today is the day for the initial wave of waiver claims, but that doesn't mean that that is it. You know, Correct. It was two years ago that the Giants claimed Tyree Phillips off of waivers on like the second or third wave of waivers. After, I think it was the Ravens claimed someone, they let Tyree Phillips go, mm -hmm. and then the Giants claimed him after. So this is going to be a, a very fluid roster for the next at least couple of days yep. and important into week one and important to note teams sometimes want to wait for veterans until after week one so you don't have to guarantee their salary yep. for the whole year so they could be even more important additions of veteran players um that are vested after that week one game gets played for matthew sitek i'm john schmelk that's the john Settle podcast brought to you by citizens the official bank of the giants we'll see you next time